so this is obviously a lot larger than the Kia Optima and it's kind of a, a bit more aggressive looking if you look at the front down there you've got these cool little fog lights but you've also got like this uh, gunmetal grey grill and it's that typical tiger nose grill that you get on these Kias and then you've got these cool headlights I actually really like the look of it and this car is a V6 3.3 litre engine um, and after driving it for a little bit it actually drives way better than what I thought side profile is pretty cool on this car um, the wheels do lack a little bit of style in my opinion they could have done something a little bit nicer and they're only 18s so these are 245 45 18s so not bad but I feel like this car would look way more impressive if it had 20 inch rims but this is the bigger car it's bigger than the Optima it's bigger than that new Kia K5 but it is smaller than the uh, what's the other one is it the K1000 or something like that that's like the big boy sedan then you've got typical Kia key fob nothing special feels kind of light and cheap but it's pretty decent nice noise when you open up the car but if you hold the trunk release it actually opens up all by itself which is a cool feature and the trunk is an excellent size uh, you do get that cargo net which you see sitting right there and dun, 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 you get a real spare with a decent little kit in there but the trunk size is 16 cubic feet which for as much leg room as you get in the back of this car it's actually a pretty decent trunk size um, and as you can see you get the little backup camera here um, I do wish that Kia would actually change their um, emblem to something that looks a bit more premium but maybe they'll do that in the future and then you get these two kind of like fake exhaust outlets which I don't know if they're real there's these itty bitty dinky exhaust back there I hate fake exhaust outlets I wish more cars would just actually go to having a real outlet so look here's another cool feature because this car is kind of a luxury sedan if you haven't already be sure to subscribe to the channel and make sure that you hit the notification bell so that you can be alerted of any new uploads that I do and hit the like because it helps the channel to grow on with the video when you lock the car you'll see that the windows fold in when you open the car yep, they fold out and you've got these cool turn signals in the wing mirrors so car open watch car locked they fold in so I'm one of those guys that will be playing with that all the time <laughs> let's take a quick look under the hood before we actually look in the interior the body lines of the car are okay but I do feel like uh, they could have put a few more lines to give it a bit more of an aggressive look so so here we are this is Kia's tried and true V6 engine um, it's actually a very decently powered car so I'm gonna put the specs on the screen like I always do but just take a look and see that this plastic cover looks super cheapy I hate that about these cars nowadays but it is what it is um, it is like as I said a 2017 here's the kicker it's a 2017 it's only got 34,000 miles on it so it's in good condition and they only want 20,000 for it and remember Kia does a 60,000 mile warranty on the powertrain 100,000 mile warranty on I'm sorry 60,000 miles full bump to bumper warranty and then 100,000 miles on the powertrain so it still has plenty of warranty left and it's front wheel drive I'm not sure if they make an all wheel drive on one of these I'll look that up and put that on the screen but it has some great features Harman Kardon audio system which I cranked up and that sounds really really good the seat is all the way back at the front 
in my driving position and I'm six foot four and it looks like there is tons of room back here. Look at this. That is amazing. My knees still have about another inch away from the back of the chair. Now this is hard plastic, but I have no problem with that because your kids are gonna be in the back scratching that anyway. And this is like a real mat pocket instead of the stupid plastic. And you've got some good sized cup holders and then gloss black on these door panels here. But the styling along with the wood trim actually looks really good. I mean, I think that this is awesome. You got 12 volt back here, USB connectivity. You've got um, the vents for your passengers. And one of my favorite things about this car is this armrest is huge and it's so soft, it's so comfortable. And then the cup holders are fairly deep. So they're actual, actually like really usable cup holders. So can't fault that. And then the seats do fold down to do a 60-40 split at the back. But we'll just take a look at this interior. It is quite impressive. And I'm telling you right now, the leather feels really nice. It feels really high spec. So I really have zero complaints when it comes to the interior. You've got the cadenza on the badging, on the um, door seal right there. And then you've got chrome around the outside. So one thing that I would say is, I think that this car would look a little bit more, uh, what's the word, stealth, if they got rid of the chrome and made this kind of like a darker black color or gunmetal black or gunmetal gray. That would give it more of a, even more premium look, but everything in here, gosh darn it. Every time I'm doing a video, my flipping alarm goes off. <laughs> Without fail. Without fail. So let's go ahead and start the car up. The engine is very quiet. Oh. Let's turn that down. Engine is quiet. So, kind of old school halogen lights. You know, be nice if these were new updated LED lights, but it is what it is. I mean, it's a 17, so it's a product of its time. But the car sits extremely comfortable. I've got so much leg room, it's ridiculous. Look at the door panels. Really like the styling of it. Car also has this panoramic sunroof. Hit this up here, goes all the way back. Look at that, opens all the way up, one touch. Radio, I don't wanna judge that according to today's standards, cause it's a 17, but it could be a bit more modernized. But the stereo system sounds awesome when you jack it up. Glove compartment's a decent size. Armrest, this has got plenty of room in there. So that's awesome. And then this is for the cup holders. Put that back, you've got USB, You've got two 12 volts, aux, USB, and then you've got this nice little shifter and you've got these different drive modes, eco, sport, smart, comfort. Not sure what smart is. I'll have to look that up and tell you guys later. The only thing I don't like is I wish this piano black was more of a flat black because I feel like it would give it more of a premium look. And you do have a digital gauge in the middle there and then you've got the two analog gauges, nothing special, but it does look kind of classy. Um, so I don't really have any complaints. Also, you see you've got blind spot monitoring on these windows. And for whatever reason, it's kind of weird. This car does not come with a remote start, which with all these features, I figured that it would. Um, yeah, so that's kind of strange, but you know, it is what it is. And you've still got the old school CD player, but remember, this is a 17. So, you know, it uh, they probably would update that on newer models. Anyway, without further ado, let's stop talking about it and let's take this for a spin and see what my driving impressions are. Setting out in the 2017 Kia Cadenza 
3.3 liter V6. So, I already said I've been driving it for a little while already. And first thing I can tell you is that the car drives extremely smooth. Um, I have no complaints about how the car feels. The steering also is very light. Um, some people may like that, some people may not. I actually happen to like um, light steering driving around town because then it makes a big car easier to turn. Um, however, when I'm on the highway going at high speeds, I don't want the car to turn so light. I kind of want the steering to be uh, weighted up a little bit. So I'm going to put the car into sport mode because earlier on I was driving around in eco and uh, I don't really feel a difference in steering between eco and sport. Maybe that's an option on the steering wheel. We'll see. Let's flick through some things. You got plenty of driver information on that center screen, by the way. Uh, that's one thing that I do really like about this car is you've got so much info that uh, you could have really asked for more, especially on a car of this type. Remember, it's not a outright sports car. It's a luxury sedan. And to me, it definitely feels luxury. So let's compare this to the Kia Optima that me and my wife owned before. Actually, we didn't own it, we was leasing it. This car feels so much um, bigger and wider. I mean, for lack of a better way of saying it, the Optima was not a small car, but you felt like you was a little bit more shoulder to shoulder in it. Okay, hold on, I got a straight. Let's see how it gets up. <laughs> hey, the car picks up really fast. Let me go ahead and close this uh, moonroof real quick. Didn't even realize it was open. Look at that. It's one touch all the way open, one touch all the way closed. I love that. Uh, you do have a self-dimming mirror up here too. And in the mirror, you kind of have the, uh, the the compass to tell you whether you're going north, east, south or west. So that's pretty cool. The shifter feels nice. I can definitely tell that the Kia Stinger and the new Kia K5 has taken some of its cues from what they did with this car and they basically built on top of it to make it even nicer than what this one is. Um, this car being all uh, front wheel drive, I told you earlier I would look it up and see if there is a all wheel drive option. If there's an all wheel drive option in this, I, I would be impressed because it drives really, really nice. Um, the front wheel drive, surprisingly enough, when I put my foot down off of a dead stop, I didn't get as much wheel spin as what I thought I might get in a car of this nature. Maybe it's because it's a heavier car, but the car off the line is not uh, super quick. Um, even though it's got 290 horsepower. Off the line, another car that has similar horsepower, let's say that Toyota Camry XSE with the V6, that's faster off the line, but it's a much lighter car. Also, I believe that the Honda Accord 2 liter Sport would be a lot faster off the line than what this car is too. So um, just something to note. But once you're moving and when the car changes gear, especially with that eight speed automatic in sport mode, it definitely, you get that surge of torque each time that it changes gear. So uh, that is something that I really like about this car uh, as I'm driving it. So going regular back street um, speed, which right now I'm going between 40 and 50 miles an hour, the car is relatively quiet, but we've got to see what it's like at highway speeds. Okay, there we go.
So one thing that I'll tell you that I do notice is when you put your foot down and the car starts going, you can definitely tell that there's a decent amount of torque steer. It's nothing to worry about, but I will say you do notice and you should notice because it's a front wheel drive car. Usually front wheel drive cars, once you get to um, the point where you're at 300 horsepower or close to 300 horsepower, you're almost always going to feel torque steer when you uh, go, off, go off of a dig. So let me pull over real quick. And I'm actually going to do an acceleration from a standstill. So let me wait for this Subaru Dubra RX to go past and then we'll do it. All right, ready? Uno, dos, tres, go. Okay, that's 60. So from my butt dyno, I would say the car feels like it probably does zero to 60 in between 5.9 and 6.3 seconds. Round about there. I'm gonna look it up. I'm gonna put it up on the screen what the official not 60 time is, but it does struggle for traction. So I'm not sure if you could hear on the camera, but when I put my foot down and tried to go off of a dig, the wheels definitely did spin. They didn't spin too much. The wheel spin really wasn't that bad. And there was actually a little bit of gravel under the uh, wheels too. Um, but it drives really nice, man. I mean, as far as how it drives and the price that they have on this car, I'm really impressed. I mean, I know that Kia's value drops quicker than let's say Honda or Toyota, but those companies have a longer history of making reliable cars. But as Kia keeps on killing the game with the Stinger, with the K5, with the new Telluride, people can't buy those cars fast enough. They're like flying off the car lot. So they're obviously doing something right. And they're obviously um, putting their money where their mouth is by giving you such a long warranty. My, I, don't, I don't believe any other car company gives you a longer warranty right now than Kia and Hyundai. Um, and because they are doing that, they must have confidence in that they have made a good product. So this car, the materials everywhere I'm feeling is more or less a soft touch material. There, there is some materials that's kind of hard uh, plastic but it looks good so it looks really good but it's hard plastic which I don't really have a problem with especially for this price point and the main reason why I don't have a problem with it is because the car um, the places that are kind of a harder plastic they're not places that you're gonna touch very often everywhere that your arm rests is actually a soft touch point and everywhere else that you're probably not going to touch um, is a little bit of a harder plastic that still has the appearance of being soft. So that was kind of smart by Kia to actually do that. But yeah, I'm going around this bend and I'm going 60 miles an hour and the car is handling really well. Now there's usually no way of getting around a car's weight unless you start you know, really getting some awesome dampers and some uh, a lot more expensive suspension. But uh, this car is a luxury car, so it's not really a car that you're going to take to the track and do a bunch of cornering in. So I'm getting ready to get on the highway and then see how this car feels. But even just putting my foot down, go around these corners, whew, the pickup is good. Now, I've driven plenty of cars. Just a few weeks ago, I even drove a twin-turbo V6 uh, AMG Mercedes. I think it was a 
C40, C450 or something like that. Um, and that had turbos on it and it was fairly quick, but I'll be honest with you, it didn't feel, for the difference in price between the two cars and that car had 30,000 miles more than what this one did, I wouldn't say it was worth that much more money, in my opinion. Now, somebody else who's a Mercedes fanboy is probably gonna beg to differ, but for what you get, these seats are very comfortable. They're not super bolstered by any means, but it definitely, it has a little bit of bolstering to keep you hugged in. I mean, if you're a, a bigger guy, a larger guy, these seats are definitely gonna be good for you. I don't think I mentioned it does have cooled seats, but it does not have, um, I'm sorry, it has heated seats, but it does not have cooled seats. That's what I meant to say. And the, um, the car's driver's seat is all electric. And given that this is a luxury car, I'm sure that the, here we go, let me get on it. Woo, let's go. Let's go. Pickup is good. Shifting quick in that eight speed automatic. Let's go again. Okay, so I'm finally on the highway. Getting ready to take the car back to the dealer. Um, but yeah, let me check. Yeah, passenger seat is all automatic as well. I, I would expect it to be for a car that's supposed to be a luxury car. I couldn't see it. It's pretty dumb if it had, you know, manual um, seat controls. But anyway, let me say this. This is the part where you notice the difference between a higher end luxury car and a Kia luxury car. The sound deadening is not that great. So I'm on the highway right now. It's not that windy of a day and the car is very, I'm, I don't want to say it's very loud on the inside, but it's not that quiet. I'm only going, well, I say I'm only going, I'm not going that fast. Wink, wink. And the car is loud on the inside. I have a ton of wind noise. So I think that, um, that is where maybe Kia cut some corners and was able to give you the car for a cheaper price. If I had to compare it, let's compare it to my old 2010 Impala LTZ. This car is a lot louder on the inside when it comes to the wind noise. Way less sound deadening. Also, I have the review of a 2017 Chrysler 300. You'll probably see that one before you see this video. That car is way quieter on the inside than what this one is. And also my review of the uh, 2020 or 2019 Impala Premier. That car is quieter on the inside than this too. So if you're looking for a very quiet ride on the highway, uh, this car is probably not it because it actually has a lot of wind noise, not that much sound in it. So, that's really the only negative thing I have had to say about this car the whole time that I've been reviewing it. It has a little bit of torque still. It's expected because it's front wheel drive with almost 300 horsepower. It's loud when it comes to wind noise. That's expected too. And then the other negative thing that I said is uh, some of the piano black is not gonna hold up well and you can tell it's easily scratched and there's some cheap plastics. Um, other than that, the car is a winner. So if you're wondering, should I buy a used Kia Cadenza with about 34,000 miles? Is it gonna be large for some taller kids in the back? You saw me sit behind myself with the uh, seat all the way back and I still had an inch to an inch and a half leg room and that was with my legs squeezed together. So it has more room in the back than what the 300 does, than what the Impala does, than what the um, Toyota Camry does. 
more leg room than what the Honda Accord does in the back. So it's definitely a winner as far as a luxury family sedan that's not going to break the bank. So keep that in mind. So I'm going to put my Lawson score on the screen right there. Thank you for watching. I hope this helps somebody out that's actually looking for a full-size sedan to buy. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.